is the day of World Autism Awareness Day and the team selected for today's forum is Autism and Youth that comply with the debt. The objective of the forum is to celebrate the day by giving awareness to public on how the public can actually improve autism life, especially youth. So today our moderator and invited panels will discuss their opinion about how youth can improve autism life. Let me introduce to everyone our moderator for today, namely Muhammad Afi bin Zaidun to lead the forum. And we also have the three other special guests as well. Now, we will begin our forum session and I would like to invite our moderator to lead the forum. Thank you. Here you go, Afi. Thank you, Afi. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening to Associate Professor Dr. Asma Hamid, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and also the Advisor of Faculty of Health Science Student Association. Mr. Afiq bin Mustafa Kamal, President of Faculty of Health Science Student Association. Ms. Tian Chaini, President of It's All About Youth Program, our lovely panelists, and all respected attendees. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the forum today. I'm Muhammad Afiq bin Muhammad Zaidun, and it is my pleasure to be the moderator for this forum. All right, today we will be discussing on how can youth improve autism life. Please allow me to start with the panel introduction first. For the first panel, we have Dr. Masni. She is the lecturer from the National University of Malaysia and have done a lot of research about children with special needs and autism spectrum disorder. Dr. Masni, would you like to say hi to our audiences today? Yeah, hello. Hi, everybody. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. All right. Thank you, Dr. Moving on to the second panel, we have this beautiful young lady here, which is Miss Siti Umayma Huda Binti Noraini, a MBBS student from University of Technology Mara Sungai Bulu. Miss Siti, can you briefly introduce yourself? Hi, okay, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for inviting me today. Uh, my name is Siti Umar Mahuda Binti Noraini. Please don't call me Siti, call me Huda. <laughs> so awkward, okay. Right. Um, I am a second year student uh, for medical lah, and I am one of the student representative council for MPP UITM Sha'alam. So hi everyone, nice to meet you guys. All right, thank you, Miss Huda. Next, I would like to introduce our last panel for today, which is Ms. Dia Chanani, representative from Malaysian Student Association India, MSAI. She is also an MBBS student, but from Manipal University, India. Ms. Dia, please introduce yourself. Hi, very good evening to everyone. My name is Dia. I'm a third year medical student and I'm studying in Malacca Manipal Medical College. And I really appreciate this forum. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. We have done with the panel introduction. For the questions that you all would like to ask our panel today, we will have a Q&A session near the end of our forum today. You can turn on your camera and unmute your mic to ask questions. If you are too shy to do so, feel free to leave the questions in the chat box and our panel will try to answer it later. All right, before we start our forum today, I would like to explain roughly about what basically autism is. Autism or Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech, and nonverbal communication. We know that there is not one autism, but many subtypes, most influenced by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Because autism is a spectrum disorder, each person with autism has a distinct set of strengths and challenges the ways in which people with autism learn, think, and problem solve can range from highly skilled to severely challenged. Some people with ASD may require significant support in their daily life, while others may need less support and in some cases live entirely independent. Now, I would like to ask our panel, Dr. Masni, to explain briefly about the definition, causes, signs, or any issues related to autism in our community. Dr. Masni, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you and a very good evening uh, to our Dean, Professor Dr. Susanna Shahar, to our Assistant Dean, Associate Professor Dr. Asma Hamid, to our uh, Mr. Moderator for tonight, Mr. Muhammad Afiq, our fellow panelists, Ms. Uh, Ms. Huda and Ms. Dia, 
and also to all participants, both uh, locally and internationally. And thank you very much uh, uh, to the organizer for inviting me to this forum. All right. So right um, back to the question just now. So um, in explaining about uh, autism or autism spectrum disorder or its popular short form as uh, ASD, the uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, fifth edition or DSM-5 is one of the uh, commonly used reference and it has been uh, updated in uh, 2013. So in DSM explained that uh, autism spectrum disorder, ASD, is a complex uh, neurological uh, and developmental disorder that begins early in life and its effect uh, how a person acts and interact with others, its effect how they communicate, how they learn and how they behave or respond in certain common everyday situations. Yeah, ASD affect uh, the structure and function of the brain and nervous system, and it can last throughout a person's life, and it is uh, mostly diagnosed in childhood. That means the problems or difficulties can already be detected early in life during the child developmental process. So, and generally, people with this condition have constant or persistent difficulties in two core aspects, that is in social communication, social communication and social interaction with other people, as well as having a, a very limited interest and uh, pattern of behaviors. So these are the two main criteria or characteristic uh, shown by people diagnosed with this uh, condition. And coming to the causes of this condition, um, to date, uh, there are no known single cause for autism. However, it has been uh, generally accepted that it is caused by abnormality in the brain structure or function. Then it brings us to the question of what may cause these abnormalities that may increase the risk of autism. So research shows that uh, there are various factors that may increase the risk of autism, including genetic factors and environmental factors as well as any disturbances that may occur during the early development of the infant brain during pregnancy period, that is during the fetus development uh, stage. So since there are no known cause uh, for this condition, hence there are no known cure for it uh, for now. So, but uh, early detection and early intervention has been proven to help minimize its impact on the person's daily life. Yeah, and, and uh, in terms of the, uh, on how to detect autism, um, unfortunately, presently, there is no single official test for diagnosing autism. Um, it is not like uh, we can simply run a blood test and getting the diagnosis of confirmed autism directly from it. No, but however, blood test is still important in order to eliminate any other possible diagnosis or any other syndromic condition that the, the, the person may have. Yeah? And uh, generally, parents or doctors may notice early indication of, of autism in a young child, although a diagnosis would need to be confirmed. Yeah? If symptoms confirm it, a team of specialists and experts will usually make an official diagnosis of autism after careful observation of the child behaviors uh, was performed and information regarding the child's developmental history was gathered, was carefully gathered, and few other assessments completed. Yeah? Through my experience, parents usually uh, are able to detect that something is wrong developmentally with their children through their behaviors and responses towards their surrounding and other people around them, which is not only towards strangers, but as well as towards uh, familiar members of their own family. Yeah? And um, uh, behavioral difficulties are commonly reported by parents. And usually parents uh, come to us with a behavioral uh, difficulties, a complaint of behavioral problems uh, shown by their children. Maybe because it is the most noticeable difficulties or issues among their children with autism. Yeah? Parents may notice that the child may not respond when his or her own name being called, uh, not looking at them in the eyes, there is no eye contact with them, 
have no babbling or pointing to object by H1 as any other typically developmental child will present. And they may react or respond differently to a, to a, a typical common sensory stimulation coming from their surrounding, such as um, uh, they may overly react uh, to the sounds coming from the food blender in the kitchen by covering both their ears and some may run to a corner and cry uncontrollably. And other behaviors such as um, repeating same physical action or uttering same words or phrases over and over. And tantruming that is difficult to calm them down. Yeah? And these are among the um, so-called uh, red flag of this condition that may help in early detection of this condition. Yeah, and coming to the issues in our community regarding this condition. Um, as I mentioned earlier, autism is a lifelong condition and this uh, condition started and can be detected early in childhood. And the core difficulties in social interaction, social communication and behavior may persist into adulthood. Although uh, uh, with, uh, with proper intervention, proper early intervention, a certain compensation technique or strategies and uh, appropriate support may eliminate or difficulties in at least some context. Yeah? But, uh, but still, some difficulties experienced by people with autism may become obvious as they grow older and as the challenges or social demand from their environment becomes higher and more complex, yeah? such as as they grow into adulthood, the need for them to socially interact with peers effectively, for them to um, uh, successfully establish a relationship with peers, and for them to understand certain social convention used in daily interaction, such as understanding others' body language, understanding certain facial expression and what it means, and so on, may become too demanding for them and difficult to understand in order for them to manage or respond appropriately. Yeah? Um, and these challenges and, and limitations may make them seem strange and kind of awkward in certain social situations. That, that may be, and most probably, uh, what will be perceived by the community. Yeah? And the key here, or what I would like to emphasize here, is that the community needs to kind of um, able to understand the challenges faced by people with autism and to understand why they behave in such a way. Or in other words, it is essential for us to improve community awareness regarding this uh, condition with better understanding of the challenges faced by people with this condition. We may be able to um, kind of uh, adapt or amend, or I should say um, adjust our responses appropriately in order to help facilitate the learning process or social integration process of the people with autism in community. So um, really the key here is it is very important uh, to improve awareness among our community about autism. Maybe more autism awareness campaigns needed. This is uh, partly because the better we understand about this condition, the better acceptance and support uh, we can possibly provide to them in order to help them integrate successfully into community. All right, that's all. Thank you, Doctor, for the useful information that you share with us today. And one thing that I can get from what you shared uh, before is that it does our responses appropriately so that we can enhance our community awareness and give a uh, harmony life to autistic person. Okay, Dr. Masni, based on your explanation before about autism, do you have any experiences in handling people who are autism? Can you share with us the way you communicate with them? Yes, yes. As an occupational therapist, it is uh, common for us. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an occupational therapist background, so it's common for us to deal with people with autism and their family in our clinical setting. So uh, right from the process of observation, performing standardized assessment and planning uh, for suitable intervention for them. So people with autism may learn things differently from us. And one person with autism also experience learning differently with other person diagnosed with the same condition. So this is due to the complexity of the spectrum and also depending on the severity of their condition. 
So owing to the complexity of their condition, learning has to be tailored individually according to their ability and functional level. Meaning there is no single intervention that could simply fit uh, for all people with autism. There is no, like shall I say, um, there is no uh, one single recipe that can fit autism yeah, for, for these people. So no. So we are able to understand how people with autism learn through sharing of their own experience, especially from those uh, with mild autism or less severe condition yeah, who can express their learning needs and also from parents' accounts based on their experience teaching their children with autism. So in terms of communication ability among people with autism, they, there can be a wide range of communication abilities observed in people with this condition. So right from entirely non-verbal, some with uh, limited uh, uh, communication ability, and some may be able to communicate fluently. Yeah? Uh, and uh, one communication technique uh, to a person with autism may not be effective to other person on the same spectrum of condition. However, um, uh, generally, certain communication uh, approaches could be effective in facilitating learning process and ability to understand among uh, people with autism. So approaches, uh, for example, um, uh, to shorten or simplify the instruction given, giving one instruction at a time, and a, sh a short pause in between conversation to let them uh, register and kind of process the information or instruction delivered. Uh, these are among the general techniques often reported as effective in communicating with people with autism. Yeah? Often by um, chunking the information into small or short messages may help people with autism to understand much better and enable them to follow instruction easily. Yeah? Sometimes we may need uh, to wait a little bit for them to give response. Yeah, that is allowing them some uh, extra time to respond uh, to our instruction or to, resp uh, or to give response in conversation. Yeah? Um, meanwhile, information in terms of more complex instruction that needed to be followed uh, by people with autism in order for them to complete certain uh, daily tasks or tasks in managing their personal care activities, uh, that can be broken down into, into its smaller steps. Yeah, such as small steps involved in preparing our own sandwich for breakfast, which then uh, can be arranged systematically from the beginning to the completion of those tasks. So after the breakdown, then we arrange it, uh, we arrange the smaller tasks from the beginning to the completion. So this approach uh, called uh, task analysis is a fundamental skills of an occupational therapy practitioners that may be utilized to help people with autism to function effectively. In fact, um, uh, often uh, this more organized technique may found to be effective with people on the autism spectrum. Yeah? Whereas for those with, uh, with limited ability to communicate and to understand us, or those with moderate to severe condition who may need more support in their learning process, um, other approaches of communication technique could also be used, uh, such as uh, the pictorial technique, yeah? the picture technique, or using visual support or visual cues, um, uh, as finding from research on this population often reported that people on the uh, autism spectrum as a good uh, visual, learner, uh, visual learner. This means that they may learn much better visually or with the help of pictures or suitable images. So therefore, the use of visual support in delivering instruction as well as in communicating with them may be uh, helpful. Yeah, uh, um, but, uh, but again, always remember uh, that we need to get their attention first before any conversation or instruction delivered to them. Yeah? Of, of course, this is very important because in order for any learning process to take place effectively, good attention to the process is a must. Yeah, it is kind of um, uh, like uh, making them alert and prepare them to be ready to receive the lesson effectively, prepare them to receive any instruction from us. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Doctor. As a conclusion, we can take the inputs given by Dr. Masni and apply it when we are communicating with autism patients during clinical or simply in our daily life. 
and one uh, what can I get is basically is one method not feel uh, not basically fit to all autistic person, but many general general approaches or general technique such as short process between uh, communication and chunk the message into the small pieces so that allow them to be uh, more uh, uh, to be more understand about what we say. And also visual cues and support may also help them. Yes, and because well, we also yeah. need some visual help, right? Sometimes yeah. that can help us to learn much better. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> well, I'm always wondering whether youth really plays an important role in improving autism life. And if the answer is yes, why? And what is your opinion regarding on this issue, Miss Dia? Uh, because I always wondering whether youth really plays an important role in improving autism life. All right. Well, first, I'd like to take this opportunity to define youth and the importance they carry. So WHO defines youth as the age group of between 15 to 24 years of age. In Malaysia, however, based on the amendment to the Youth Societies and Youth Development Act in 2019, youth is looked at from the age group of 15 to 30 years of age. And based on the National Statistics Department, that makes up a staggering 14.6 million people, amounting to 46% of our population. Now, we very well know that this age group is an extremely vital population in Malaysia, so this is the age group responsible for steering and shaping the country. As they say, the youth is the hope of our future. The diverse and numerous roles that they play in the country's political, social, and economic landscapes underline the fact that they are a critical demographic group to engage with. Based on a survey conducted in 2015 as well, it was concluded that the youth are well-informed and wired. It was reported that in 2012, 74% of the youth watch television for information daily. The usage of internet as well has increased tremendously over the past five years. So this just indicates how quickly Malaysian youth have adapted to connecting to the World Wide Web as a source of information. Now, prior to me answering if the youth are playing an important role to improve autism life, I would like to take a while to just address the problems that are faced in Malaysia regarding autism in the very first place. So I think like Dr. Masna mentioned, we need, there's a need for increased awareness. So um, we have so much access to the internet, like I mentioned, television and social media for information, but we still lack the awareness. So it brings me to question, are we using this access to internet rightfully? See, if we were to just open up Instagram today, I'm pretty sure all of us know of Instagram or have Instagram. If you just type up autism, you'd come across a beautiful page known as Adam's Autism Family, which is based on a Malaysian family that has a child named Adam, which shares with us their daily life, the struggles and the experiences of having an autistic child. It's really fantastic considering this family is using a youth driven platform to create awareness about autism. If you go on Netflix, for instance, and you just type on autism over there, you'd find two to three good TV shows about autistic individuals. You might have heard of The Good Doctor or Atypical or Love on the Spectrum that shows us how the behavior of autistic individuals are very much different from normal individuals. So next, an issue I saw was that there was a prominent insufficient number of public spaces and businesses in Malaysia that take into account the needs of individuals with autism. Third, a shortage of qualified care and education professionals was seen to be lacking as well, sadly. There are also inclusion objections and support services for long-term planning, such as employment and independent living for the autistic individual are lacking for families. So these are certain problems we are facing in Malaysia. And I felt that it was important to highlight that before we can address how the youth is improving autism life. Well, like I said, we have the awareness because how could we not? We all have access to the internet. We all have access to social media, to television. I'm pretty sure all of us have heard about the term autism. Do we all like know what it is? So there are certain actions that the youth is taking. I'm pretty sure we've heard of NASOM, which is the National Autism Society of Malaysia. So that celebrates autism and most importantly, educates us on this matter. They have Autism Awareness Days, which is as today, April 2nd. And they also provide volunteer programs that help us um, deal with autistic individuals and learn more about them. And upon me inquiring, I was very surprised indeed that the majority of the, of the individuals who volunteer are youth. Uh, we also have support groups on Facebook. Upon me just typing on Facebook autism, I found Autism Malaysia AM or Autism Children's Club ACA. And these are groups on Facebook that talk about how they could make autism life better. They share diets, they share helping tips, you know, hobbies that could help autistic children. 
I also came across Sanwe Putramal, where every Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., if you might know, is an autism friendly mall. They, you know, they dim the lights, they reduce the volume, they provide uh, express lanes at their, um, you know, shop lots for autistic individuals. They give you reserved parking bays. And most importantly, the staff of the mall have undergone training on how to manage autistic ch the children and support their family during an incident. They also have calm rooms, that's like a panic room, specifically designed to provide a calming atmosphere for special need individuals experiencing a meltdown. And sensory walls as well that help calm down the autistic children. I came across the Association of Resource and Education for Autistic Children that's um, started up by the Lions Club. Now, although this is not very much so founded by the youth, in fact, it is majorly driven by parents of autistic individuals, it is a Lions community service project that has support from the public and Lions family throughout Malaysia. Set up in Penang, it provides free services to autistic children and their families. Now, why I included it here in this list was because along with the Lions Club, there's also a junior wing, if some of you may know, called Leo Club, that are in tune with the agendas of its founders and is involved as well with participating in this. Uh, I came across Autism Link Malaysia as well, another community for autistic individuals, where when I looked at the members of this foundation, I was very happy to see that it was majorly filled with youth. Um, in fact, a good example as well to demonstrate the youth's awareness about autism is the fact that one of the biggest newly launched apps gaining considerable traction called Clubhouse which features about 90% of youth participants have active discussions with doctors and the youth of Malaysia on autism, if you were to just type autism in their search box, which goes on to show that the youth are creating awareness about autism using platforms of today, methods which they resonate with. There's also All Right Autism Center in Malaysia. So this is founded by a young individual named Miss Mishantani, who had great passion to serve and work with children who are differently able. She's a certified registered behavior technician, and she created an amazing learning space to accommodate children under the autism spectrum. What's also great is that she's affiliated with two Malaysian businesses as well. So we have the Malaysian Banana Leaf Restaurant, also founded and you know, owned by two young individuals, Misha and Justin, that um, provide specific uh, requirements that are really um, accepted by the autistic individuals, you know, like visual aids, and menus, because like we know, they learn better with that or they can understand better with that. They also have, you know, laminated instructions for hand washing because, you know, they need instructions. So they show step one, step two, step three, which really helps the autistic children there. And again, very importantly, all the staff is educated and trained there on how to react with children with autism. I also saw Dr. Charles Dental Clinic, which was an autism friendly dentist. Because, you know, they, they have panic attacks or they just scream and they have outbursts. It's very, very important to have someone that understands this and can handle them in a very well-mannered way. So to conclude, I would like to say, though, the majority of what is done to aid autism in Malaysia is parent-driven. It's done by parents of autistic individuals. If I were to look at it, of course they are youth. We can't ignore the parents. They're still in the age group of 15 to 30 years. But if we were to talk about the general public, as per se, or the youth, we are still lacking action on our own. The youth is not spearheading this change completely, but what's good to note is that we are taking the initiative. So in retrospect, if we were to have looked at how the youth were doing five years ago, all this awareness might not have been there. But right now it's like a bait and being passed on. You know, the, the seniors have done it and um, young individuals are volunteering in these communities and taking charge as well. So our awareness is quite there. It's just not being put into action completely. Yes. All right. Thank you, Ms. Dia, for your incredible answers. And for me to sum up, uh, not only the youth plays a role to improve autism life, but everyone in the society should take a role to improve autism life and their responsibility so that those autism patients will feel more appreciated and confident to socialize in our community. And one thing uh, that uh, touched my heart is that what Ms. Dia said that youth is hope of our future. And after this, I will promote about autism in, our, in my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Next, <laughs> moving on, uh, I would like to ask uh, the opinion from Dr. Masni on the effects of youth to autism life. 
does youth involvement make any changes to the daily life of someone who have autism? Dr. Masni, this stage is yours. Yes, um, as members in community, youth uh, definitely can play vital roles in helping people with autism to integrate successfully into the community and functioning better in their daily activities. This can be achieved with better understanding among youth of the challenges or difficulties faced by people on the autism spectrum. As I mentioned previously, increasing awareness about autism is important with better understanding of the challenges uh, faced by people with autism, uh, as, as well as uh, challenges faced by their family. Some negative stigma towards people with autism could be eliminated uh, or minimized. Yeah? Youth uh, could act as uh, peers in supporting the needs of people with autism. Youth also can act like a role model in helping people with autism to successfully and actively participate in the community. This is because uh, the degree of the success of active participation in community among people with autism may depend on multiple factors. It can be depending on the severity of their condition, right from uh, severe, moderate or mild autism, uh, the intervention that they could possibly receive previously, and of course, the earlier the intervention started, the better functional outcome they could achieve, and as well as most importantly, the degree of suitable support that they could receive from the people around them, including from their own family members and as well as from the community. So this is where I see that youth can uh, play an important role in supporting people with autism. But again, of course, in order for us to help them, we really need to have an understanding of their challenges and difficulties. With better understanding of their condition, come respect towards them as individual. And uh, remember, I did mention about task analysis earlier, where we can uh, chunk certain tasks into it, a smaller step for people with autism to follow easily in little step-by-step -step technique. So, and this could be used by youth uh, to be alert of any small achievement made by people with autism in completing certain tasks and be ready to um, uh, kind of uh, uh, celebrate or acknowledge any small success achieved by them. Always remember that there is no small success that is too small to be celebrated, right? Yeah, so yes. uh, any simple acknowledgement uh, such as clapping your hand, nodding or gestures of thumbs up given to people with autism on their success on any small steps may act like a powerful motivation to them or to us also right so yeah. uh, so which uh, could help to make positive changes in a person with autism life so you can definitely contribute in in any small way that they can in order to achieve bigger goals in helping uh, supporting people with autism thank you all right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Hopefully, we as youth in the society can bring the positivity to the people with autism so that we can live happily and harmony. Now, let us ask our second panel, Ms. Siti Umay Mahuda. Do you think people with autism can contribute something to community? This stage is yours. All right, thank you. So I am no professional, but I'm here talking as a rep represent for youth. Okay, so as what Dr. Masni mentioned earlier, autism spectrum disorder or ASD is a complex developmental condition, which we might develop since early childhood. All right, so it involves persistent challenges in social interactions, speech and nonverbal communication and restricted or repetitive behaviors, right? So the effects of ASD and the severity of symptoms are different in each person, correct? So the word spectrum itself is basically a condition that is not limited to a specific set of values, but can vary. So you might have heard about this word a lot in physics when we're learning about optics, when you're trying to distinguish colors in a rainbow. So there's eight colors in a rainbow and they're all, they are all of different kinds, okay? So I'm just, I just want to mention this. If you've ever heard of an artist named Zarina Zainuddin, she was blessed with two sons who has autism and they are now, I think, 24 years old, okay? So you can clearly appreciate the differences between those two brothers in regards of the disorder that they have. And one of the two has been working in a gym as a health instructor, living his life as if he was normal. And this disorder does not affect him in any way. But of course... What we see is a total different 
total different view than those who experience handling autistic individuals up front, especially when they are adults, right? So yes, um, coming back to the question, I do believe autistic people can have the ability to contribute something to the community if we help them, okay? As professionals, as peers, they can contribute something to the community if we give them some kind of support or guidance. So I support the need to embrace everyone's special quirks and not just autistic people on that matter. However, in these circumstances, autistic people might need extra and or special help from us normal citizens in equipping themselves with skills they need for future employment, right? So let's try and illustrate this situation. You offer an individual a lemon. They can make lemonade. It sounds cliche, but if you think of it closely, we should always offer the same platform and opportunity to any living individual, okay? Not trying to limit them based on their disorder or disability, correct? So I could list a few autistic people who have proved us all wrong. So like Tim Burton, he's a movie director. Susan Boyle, a famous singer. Bill Gates, one of the co-founders of the Microsoft Corporation and Michael Angelo, if you know, is a sculptor, painter, architect, yada, yada, okay? So, and the great Einstein himself had many autistic traits and he is the world's most recognized scientist and mathematician. Mm -hmm. This should be evidence, living proof that people with autism can also become somebody and not limited by their disorder to achieve something great and contribute to the community. So who are we to doubt them? Who are we to describe their disorder as a disability or a flaw? It should be our responsibility to help shape them into becoming these crazy successful intelligent people. Nothing is impossible, but to make things possible takes action and motivation. So yes, thank you, that's from me. All right, yeah, now we are clear that everyone in society, including autism, can contribute success or positivity to the community if we help, support, and give them the guidance. All right, there is always a mistaken idea or belief that many people have about autism. Ms. Dia, as a young and caring citizen, how can we help to lessen the stereotypes about autism? This stage is yours. All right. Well, there obviously are many people that know a little bit about the autism spectrum, but there's also a lot of misbeliefs and stereotypes about them. Like, you know, um, there are stereotypes, for instance, that boys are the only ones that are affected because predominantly more males are affected as compared to females. Mm -hmm. There are stereotypes about, um, you know, they just speak in a monotonous manner or yeah. they lack empathy, you know, or that they are, um, they avoid attention or either they crave attention and throw temper tantrums. So mm -hmm. there's so many of these stereotypes and misbeliefs. And in order for us to lessen this, I would say the first thing is educate ourselves educate ourselves first and then go on to educating others so only with educating ourselves will we learn so you can do that by i mean i don't need to teach you how to educate yourself you know how to read you know look up the internet attend public talks or attend participate in forums such as this which is very well organized you know volunteer at programs leverage social media and most importantly i would say talk about autism and not only autism but other mental health issues more openly you know, there's no need to shy away from them. Have constructive conversations with individuals and um, talk about this. So that would be one thing, education. Number two would be probably adopting a mindset which allows you to go. So I would say, put this in the education system as well. You know, create a culture and environment that embraces autism and looks at it as a positive rather than a negative. So in fact, in schools as well, we should try to include studying about certain special need conditions. And we could, you know, at least maybe learn the signs and symptoms of these conditions, perhaps to start off with the conditions that we most commonly see in Malaysia first. And then we could go ahead, you know? Then we could celebrate awareness days, like how we're celebrating it today. We celebrate it, we focus on embracing the differences and like I said, see it as a positive and not a negative. We should also, I think we could include we could include it as a necessity to perhaps um, train our staff, whether it's staff in the schools, whether it's staff in cinemas, whether it's staff in banks or businesses, having a basic training on how to deal with a special need child 
I think that's very important. And that's pretty vital that we should have that. And as young entrepreneurs, we have so much of the youth today that are already working individuals or having their own business startups, which is great and fantastic. But we should also take the initiative to make our businesses more autism friendly. You know, ironically, many of the changes that would make a business more autism friendly is very low in cost. It's just like having another queue for special needs individuals or having clear signs or clear labels or maybe just dimming the lights or reducing the music, you know, upon request. That, that's good mm -hmm. enough for us to just take an initiative. And I would also say like maybe for restaurants or like, you know, um, food industry related, we should provide more opportunities and more types of foods for them. Because as you know, people under the autism spectrum, they are frequently advised to have a certain recommended diet. So we could, you know, make available gluten or casein free food you know, that are applicable to these autistic individuals, because many a times they go out and some of them don't even have something to eat, you know? And you might think, how does providing more autism friendly places help reduce the stereotypes about it? Well, it's as simple as familiarizing their autistic behavior. You know, educating is one thing, but witnessing is another. So like perhaps um, Lee Ayakoka once said, apply yourself, get all the education you can, but then do something about it. Don't just stand there, you have to make it happen. So that's what I would say. And, you know, I would also think that, like I, I mentioned, we have so much access to television and social media and, and movies about autism. I would say that considering of what much of the youth and the society at large learns on disorders is from this representation in media and TV series and movies and autobiographies. So I think it's also very important to um, check these representations and scrutinize them if they are wrong, because many a times they are misrepresenting autism. You know, in quite a few cases, media representations of talent and special abilities can be said to have contributed to a harmful divergence rather than a positive divergence between the general image of autism and the clinical reality of the autistic condition. So to give you an example, you know, um, we have the highest crossing film that one might have heard of in 1988. There was a movie that came out called Rain Man that has Dustin mm -hmm. Hoffman in it and Tom Cruise. So Dustin mm -hmm. Hoffman plays an autistic individual. However, it also shows that he has superb recall and like impeccable mathematics skills, you know? But both of these are showing Savantism. To give you a brief idea, perhaps Savant syndrome or Savantism is a rare condition in which someone with significant mental disabilities demonstrates certain abilities far in excess of average. But the truth is now, although about half of the cases of savantism are associated with autism, the majority of cases of autism do not have savantism in it. In fact, only one in a million people are affected with savantism. But I see that a lot of the media representations show that a lot of autistic individuals have these special gifted skills, when in reality, only one in 200 autistic individuals have, you know, savantic skills. So um, I think that is something that also, you know, would help if we criticize the media to lessen the stereotype that not all autistic individuals are, you know, impeccably like absolutely fantastic with their mathematical skills and stuff. So um, I would say, yeah, we should take reasonable steps to help. Otherwise, um, you know, you're not helping uh, reduce the stereotypes, but neither are we learning or neither are we going forward. So we do need to address certain issues. All right. Wow, amazing and wonderful opinion from Ms. Dia. Thank you, Ms. Dia. As a conclusion, we should learn the facts and actually accept all the negative stereotypes without any further study or research. And in this case, in, it is important for us to understand what basically is autism spectrum disorder is and how a person with autism behaves and educate and also media representation and community with representation also responsible in this case. This to make sure that they do not feel alone and discriminated from our community and society. All right, last but not least, in your opinion, Ms. Siti Umay Mahuda, do you think youth have enough power to help the person or community with autism? This stage is yours. All right, so in these modern times, I feel like the youth have tremendous influence towards someone's actions and beliefs. So don't you think just a single snap on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook about the new Kit Kat ice cream. And then the next thing you know, it's already sold out in the next five local stores you go to. 
Okay, so especially given the advance of technology, the youth has greater access to information and news from all around the world, not to mention the ability to share a single news or even gossip that can break the internet. Right, so I believe that young people have the ideas, the creativity, and great energy to shape a better world. We're so excited, so ready, so energetic to make something new out of nothing. So they are full of hope and through innovation and imagination, they are problem solvers, okay? And have a great potential to generate a positive social change in the world. So not a lot of people are aware of autism, autism spectrum disorder or ASD, or maybe we would know about the term itself. We would know about the clinical condition, but we were not really aware of how are we able to control people with autism. So in cases where children or adults with autism throws, throws tantrum in public, the public would just stand idly by not knowing what to do in normal cases. So imagine seeing an elderly mother trying to contain her son who clearly has a stronger physique than herself throwing a tantrum. You see, when the youth is passionate enough to educate the public on the awareness of autism, people tend to help based on what they know. So as youth, when we educate the public, the public knows about something and their knowledge, like Ms. Diaz said earlier on, apply your knowledge and do something about it. So we might not be able to impact a majority of the community, but these small communities that we are able to impact would you know, influence others. So uh, their knowledge, this forum, for instance, one of a great example into creating awareness. So yes, kudos to the organizing committee for this amazing initiative. If the youth stands together with an objective to support the ones with an autistic child or, or autistic family member, for example, or educate the public on this disorder, people will stop by and help instead of throwing mockery faces, judging as if those parents don't know how to handle their child well. Okay. So indeed, for me, the youth has enough or more power to help autism. Fresh, bright, new ideas are needed to change a policy. However, experiences are hard to find and valuable. So the youth and the adults are needed to work together in creating a synergy between two parts to build something great and better and not just fresh for that matter. So that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss, for your informative and encouraging thoughts and ideas that really make our audiences realize that you are one of the generation that can give the positive thought and power to help those with autism to stay connected with society in this world. And also you and adult could collaborate uh, because adults have the more experiences and it can create more better society in this world and uh, become a uh, harmony in our society with autistic person. Now we will open for Q&A session before we end our forum today. All right, a participant, you can unmute your mic and voice out your question to any of our panel or you may leave your question in the chat box. You can briefly introduce yourself by telling us your name, program, course, and from which university. All right, uh, I would like uh, uh, to look into the chat box. Okay, uh, panelists, uh, here one question uh, from Kadrina, uh, course Biomed, uh, University Kebangsa Amnesia. She would like to ask, uh, is it true that having pet are good for child with autism as for their therapy? Any panels uh, to answer this question? Okay, um, maybe, maybe I can answer that question. Okay, thank you. So, um, like I said before, like I mentioned before, there is no one recipe of, uh, for intervention that could uh, yeah. possibly suitable for individuals with uh, autism. So, um, so, uh, so having said that, um, for, uh, what I can say that it's okay to try. It's okay to try. Um, yeah. uh, maybe, uh, maybe the household have a cat as a pet, right? A cat, and they can can see how the child or how the person react to the cat and how they um, adjust themselves or how they respond to the cat needs. So we can try it out. So if it is suitable, if the uh, if cats uh, clearly can calm them down then why not carry on 
go ahead, go ahead. If we found out, no, it's not suitable, uh, maybe the, 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 the person will uh, push away the cat, push away the pets, you know, you know? so that's means it's not, it's not suitable. Maybe it's, uh, the person is not ready uh, for any uh, animal therapy yet. So we can stop no. first. Yeah, when it's ready, then it's ready, but don't, don't push it. No, you know, the, the, the most important thing is to try it out step by step and see how they responded to that, uh, to that, uh, the, the, to the pet. Yeah, okay. So, uh, to sum up, the keyword is just try anything, uh, but slowly and uh, continuously. All right. We look up to another question from uh, Tan Yanzo from UKM. Good evening. I am Tan Yanzo from UKM, course PDR. I have a question to ask. Most of the autistic children are believed to have special skills or abilities in certain fields. Is this a truth or a stereotype? Maybe uh, Miss uh, Umayma Huda or Dia Chanani, Miss Dia, can answer this. Or Miss uh, Dr. Masni also. Well, hi. Um... Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So I think I, I addressed it that um, see these, these special skills are known as um, semantic skills. And um, although mm -hmm. it shows I and mean, we always think that autistic individuals have these semantic, um, semantic skills, not all of them have it. Yes, these special skills are mostly seen in autistic individuals, but not all of them have it. In fact, only one in 10 to one in 200 based, I mean, from what I remember, my research, of autistic children have these um, special gifted skills. Not all of them have. So it's a myth that every autistic individual has these special gifted abilities. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, I mean, uh, I do not have the figure right at the top of my head right now, but I think it's less than not even reaching 1% of uh, people with autism who have seven skills, you know? Uh, no, that, but uh, when... We, when for those who have it, the uh, the seven skill is not uh, in a wide uh, in wide use or, or 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 generalized to other things. It's only focused or it's only um what we call it only uh, limited to only one skill. If they are very seven, are very good with numbers, so that's it. They are only good with numbers. That's all. And if they are really good with memorizing things so that's it they are only good with memorizing things only but they are not able to put that into functional use mm. you know on, on how to uh, function in everyday life so that's why they are still on the spectrum on the this broad spectrum they are still on the spectrum you know yeah. but, but the numbers I, I don't think is is that that big that large no <laughs> all right thank you okay uh miss uh, city omai mahuda do you want to answer? Okay, I think they've answered. <laughs> thank you. Next question. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, we've, uh, we got from Yi Hui from Speech Therapy Program, UKM. What are the effects to the life of the autism person if the youth neglect them? Okay, so I think I can answer this. All right, All right so I you. think the effects of uh, what can happen to an autistic person if the youth neglect them is a lot of things, basically. But I think as a youth myself, if we neglect a lot of issues in our country or in the world, we would uh, impact a lot of life. And basically, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, not a lot of changes that can be done. So in this case, I feel like we are already advancing more forward so the autistic children or autistic people have the opportunity and platform to progress right so given if the youth is not aware enough or we're not really caring about autistic children on the normal life daily life base so i think um in this case not a lot of opportunities and platforms can be offered to these autistic children and people would not be aware about the clinical conditions that the autistic children have and the, the, the trait of empathy would be, you know, neglected as well in our community, yeah. right? So that's it for me. All right, thank you. Uh, next uh, question from Afika from Physiotherapy Year 2. Uh, may I ask if an autistic child is having a meltdown in the public full of people 
is there something I as bystander can do? Especially if the mother seems to have her hand full with her other children. All right, any panels can answer this? Maybe I can try to answer that. <laughs> okay, thank you. So is, it's is okay. Afika here. Afika? Maybe <laughs> I have some question for you also. <laughs> yes, I am okay, here. Okay, okay. So Afika is there. So what do you think? Uh, you we might do in this situation if you are, you, you are facing with this situation in real life. Well, when I saw it happening, the first thing in my mind is that I need to at least like be there and like close his eyes or his ears so that he's not triggered by the sounds of the crowd, especially in Pasar Malam at late night markets. But at the same time, I feel like would it offend the mother if I as a bystander were to do something? It's, I am afraid that it would offend her and make it seem like she is incapable when I myself just want to help. Yes, yes. So that's the dilemma that we mm. always have, right? So should I help or should I not? Or will that offend the mother? Or, or you know, so but um, but that, that's the dilemma, that dilemma we will have. But uh, for, from my opinion, from my personal opinion, if we, if we meet with that kind of situation, maybe what we can do, um, just ask the mother, okay, uh, uh, is there anything I can help you with? Or do you need any help with, with your other children? I can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, take a look uh, for them for a while, you know, while you are trying to calm your, your, your the other children. Uh, down and to calm them. So that's maybe uh, uh, a kind of help that we can offer to this uh, mother in this situation, you know. Uh, and then, um, and sometimes uh, I read I read about it. Sometimes they say, just don't look at us with a skeptical look. Is helpful enough? Sometimes they say like that, you know. So yeah. don't look at us like. Mm, you don't know how to take care of your children. You don't even know how to calm down your child, you know, when it's melt, melting down like that. So Satan, don't, don't give that kind of look. It's helpful enough. <laughs> you know, rather mm -hmm. than you just stand there and give one kind of look to the mother, you know. So, so it's kind of like um, we said uh, what we can do if at, at the least, <laughs> the least that we can do. <laughs> yeah, but but it's always okay to ask. To ask the mother, do you need any help? Yeah. Uh, do you need um uh, do you need help with the other children while well, you are trying to calm your the other children down? You know, uh, so that that can be done also. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's you. the appropriate uh, appropriate way because we have dilemma, right? So we ask the mother first. Okay. Uh, next question by Tan Zing Yun. Hi, I'm Zing Yun from PDR UKM. From some statistic and based on my whole school life from primary school, I found out twins have a higher rate of autism. Is it real? And is, is, uh, is real a why? And if it's real, why? Uh, any panel want to answer this? Uh, honestly, I've heard of this before. I've read about this. And I've honestly oh, yeah. wanted to redirect this question back to Dr. Masni because she's a professional. So I've read about one thing also is that in a group of siblings, if the first one had an autistic trait or has the disorder, the second child diagnosed with autism would have like um, a more, uh, what's it called? Muted clinical symptoms according to the autism, basically meaning that um, would not have severe symptoms compared to the first child. I've heard of that. I've read about that, but I'm not sure if that's, you know, a myth or something true. So Dr. Masni, if you care to answer me <laughs> as well. Okay, because uh, as we know, that there is no known uh, cause of autism uh, until now. So we, we still don't know what uh, causing the autism, what caused this condition for sure. But uh, from what we understand that genetic, there is a, there is a play a role there, you know. So, but then when we say that genetic play a role there, so when there is a, there's a twin and if one got it, then maybe there's a higher chances of the other one also have, to have it. Or maybe one siblings to have it and then there's also higher chances of the others 
uh, uh, in the siblings uh, to have it. You know? But uh, sometimes also research found out that um, uh, if one sibling is uh, diagnosed with autism, and then maybe the other siblings could be diagnosed with something else, with uh, some uh, learning difficulties, you know, with mm -hmm. some, some form of uh, condition as well. Yeah, so yeah. because the, the, the genetic uh, factor is there, but uh, it could be also that uh, a twin that one only one diagnosed with autism, but the other one is a typically developed, uh, develop, uh, uh, typically developmental child. You know, so but yeah. but so how um, should I say how strong the genetic aspect play the roles there is uh, quite uh, difficult for us to to you know find out yet for now. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to the next question from Amira. Good evening, I am Amira, uh, occupational therapy student from UKM. What is the difference between high functioning autism and low functioning autism? Uh, anybody else can answer this? Okay, maybe I can help with that. So uh, yeah. what's the difference? Autism. So when we say uh, the condition or the, the, the diagnosis is the autism spectrum disorder, the word spectrum they're showing that they can fall into, into either very severe uh, condition or to a, a mild, just a mild condition. So, so that's the difference. The difference is uh, whether uh, on the severity, severity of the condition that they have. So they can be just a mild condition where, where they can uh, grow up and manage themselves, they can talk, uh, they can mm. communicate best communication with us, they can uh, express their needs, you know, so the basic needs they can express, they, they can manage themselves. Um, but for those who are with a severe, severe condition, fall uh, at the end of the spectrum, maybe they, they, they can't even help themselves, they can even uh, manage themselves, they can even perform all the daily activities, they need help along the way they need help in every um, uh, aspect of in their life. Oh, all right. So, but they are doctor. still under the same, uh, the same spectrum. They are still diagnosed with autism spectrum but disorder, disorder, but differentiate with uh, the severity of their uh, condition. Either it's mild, just mild condition, or uh, moderate, or very severe condition. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, next, moving on to the next question from Hana. Hi, I'm Hana from UITM Shalam. I've seen persons with autism are sometimes have to consume their medication, but some of the parents choose to not give them that even if it will affect people around them physically. What do you guys think about this? Okay, so hi, Hana. You're from UITM Sha'alam. I'm from you. I'm here in UITM Sha'alam. So hi. <laughs> okay. So um, I follow closely um the Instagram Adams Autism Family, and I've got to know that um another way of them treating the symptoms of their child is not basically not just um solely on medications. They also use essential oils to calm their child down, and it helps. Mm -hmm. It helps. So um. In terms of medication, I think Dr. Masni also mentioned earlier that there is no specific cure to treat um, ASD as a whole, but sometimes we can use medication to uh, treat the symptoms, to um, maintain or control tantrums that the autistic children are facing and whatnot. But I think, in my opinion, um, sometimes these parents do not want their children to depend on these medications because of long-term complications or long-term effects on them. So in this case, for parents, they would understand their child better and they would know which kind of therapy or um, traditional med medication would help best in this kind of situation. So that is in my honest opinion. Okay. Uh, any, any other panels want to give opinions about this? I, I think it's also very subjective. Like upon yeah. meeting, um, autistic individuals react to medication differently. So not every um, child might react to the same medication. I mean, might react to the medication the same way as someone else might. So I think, um, like Huda mentioned, essential oils seems to be helping Adam, which I as well follow and I saw that. So that was great. But um, they'd also mentioned that like some other individuals that bought the same essential oils, their child got irritated by it. 
and you know didn't quite react to it well so it's very subjective as to what um helps with what child yeah, yeah. thank you for uh, your opinion okay next moving on to the next question we have from Vinusha. Hi, my name is Vinusha from Psychology UKM. Question one, do you think autistic individuals' mental health problems are being neglected by our society and how can we support them? And Vinusha also have question number two, do all autistic children struggle with language uh, which is speaking? Any other panels want to answer this question? Question one and question two. Or any question? Um, I don't think the autistic individuals' mental health problems are being neglected 100% because initiatives are taken, awareness yeah. is there, like Dia said. But yeah. I do think um, there could, there's something more to be done. There's always something more that we can do. But mm. I don't think 100% that the mental health of these autistic individuals are neglected fully. So how can we support them? I think um, Ms. Dia also mentioned earlier and also Dr. Masni mentioned earlier that we can act as peers to, you know, to be there for them, cooperate with them. And to do that, we need to understand these autistic children. So you need to be patient, but you need to be resilient. All right. So you need to be at their eye level. You need to understand their language. Just as much as you want someone to understand you, you need to understand them. So to, have, yeah. to, to understand them, you need knowledge. So it's always important for you to read about autis autism and to you know, participate in forums like this. So um, that's another way. And one about the question number two, do all autistic children struggle with language? From my readings and from this forum itself, autism spectrum disorder, it's a wide spectrum. So um, autism has a lot of uh, traits different traits so it's different from any from one individual to another so some individual might have a problem in talking some individual might be okay in talking they could act as as if he or she is a normal person and whatnot to my experience i've had uh, i've been friends with people who were diagnosed with autism and one of them could not even talk properly they could mutter okay. words fiddle, fiddle with their fingers and whatnot but another could talk just as normal, just as a normal person would. So yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, next question. Hi, I'm Shalini from KPJUC Nilai. My questions are to Miss Dia. Can autism spectrum disorder be cured? And if you have an autism kid, how will you deal with them? Miss Dia, can you answer this question? Okay. Well, just okay. keep in mind, I'm a third year medical student, you know, no professional here. Um, okay, can it's okay. Autism, okay. Can autism spectrum disorder be cured? So I think like Dr. Masne mentioned before, like I think Huda's also mentioned, there is no fixed um, treatment yeah. because we don't exactly know the fixed cause of it or what causes it in the very first place. So um, I don't, I mean, I don't think there's a, there's a term, I mean, I don't think we can cure it. And in all honesty, I don't think we should cure it. You know, they are part of our society. They are born this way. We should integrate them. We should try to assimilate them into our society and not look to curing them, but we could definitely help them. We could um, calm many of their, you know, emotions or we could aid with their sensory stimulation because they get so stimulated. We could help with their, with their emotional outburst. You know, we could help calm them not necessarily, I would say cure them. And uh, that's my answer for the first one. And you said, if I have an autistic child, how would I deal with them? Well, yeah. first I would read a lot more than what I read for this forum, <laughs> a <Yeah>. lot more, because <laughs> I read, but I mean, I, I would need to read a lot more about what I as a parent could do in this yeah. forum I read as a student and as a participant, you know, but uh, I would read about what I as a parent could do. I would um, approach, the centers that I did mention that were very parent driven, you know, because they are open to parents of autistic individuals. In fact, they're open to everyone to come and learn. So I would learn about that. I would read a lot more. And um, then I would I would take my steps. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not 100%, um, you know, complete with my answer that because I myself don't know. I need to read a lot more. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, as my opinion also, I'm speech therapy student, year one. 
and I agree with Miss what Miss Dia said that basically we need to as uh, uh, from speech therapist itself we uh, give a rehabilitation and therapy so that uh, we uh, not necessarily want to cure but we want to assimilate them to the society and help them to become socialized uh, and be adaptable to our society and community and so that our community should help them also. All right, we're moving on to the next question, which is from Warda Hayati. Hi, my name is Warda from Nutrition Year 2. I've heard somewhere that many autistic girls are undiagnosed because they are great at hiding it. May I know why girls are harder to diagnose compared to boys? Thank you. Uh, any panels can answer this question? Maybe I can try to answer that. Okay, thank so, you. Um, uh, Warda, because it's uh, research found that um, children uh, with uh, autism, uh, who are girls, girls, if yeah. they are diagnosed with autism, usually they 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 may show uh, the, the severe part of it, the, the severe spectrum of it compared to boys. Yeah. So so sometimes um uh, they also uh, there's there also comorbid uh, diagnosis with come with it. Maybe they are just not that not only diagnosed with autism, but there is uh, comorbidities uh, such as uh, they have like um we, we comorbid with uh, mental mental retardation with uh, learning disabilities. But that what uh, what uh, research found so far about a uh, girl diagnosed with autism, they they usually show uh, 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 the more severe part of it compared to boys. Mm. Yeah, but 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 uh, as others also say, uh, it's not necessarily that way. But it's uh, the 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 ratio is more on that. You know, so if girls diagnosed with autism, they may fall onto the more severe part of a spectrum compared to uh, uh, boys. Yeah, but not, right. not to say they, they are uh, they are good at hiding it. Uh, maybe not, but maybe mm. maybe with uh, early intervention uh, when when parents uh, mm. uh, uh, sense there is something wrong with the girls, you know, so they, they may send uh, the, the girls for early intervention as early as they could. So that may help to to at least um, uh, improve the function, improve the the children's uh, function. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Doctor, for your uh, encourage uh, for your super ideas. And here I want to share something from our audiences uh, from Nur Atika. Good evening. I just want to share with all you, all of you guys. Somehow I quite curious too about the genetic that has been mentioned by Doctor Masni, uh, because my neighbor with six kids have four kids with autism. Start with their third child. Okay. Thank you for the sharing, Nora Atika. And here uh, we have another question to our panelists today uh, from Zedrin Zuhaira. Hi, I'm Zedrin from Speech Science Student from UKM. As we know that there is no proven cure for autism. However, are uh, there therapies that are useful in treatment of behavioral symptoms in autistic children? Uh, any panels can answer this? All right. So um, again, yeah. through my experience with friends and family friends who had an autistic family member, um, they tried a lot of things. So some things that I can actually share with you guys is that one of them had a horse riding therapy. Another had a swimming therapy and another had a pain painting therapy to express their feelings. So uh, those are the therapies that a lot of autistic children, I think those are famous therapies. And yeah. you can actually read about them at the internet. Uh, you can just search it up and a lot will pop up. But um, through experience, uh, those activities help calm the child and uh, are helpful for them to express their emotions more better like that. Yeah. All right. Any other panels want to answer this? Maybe asked... from Dr. Masni also, uh, right. occupational therapist. Dr. Masni. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, like what uh, Uda said, and then uh, not to forget speech therapy, yeah. the psychology, yeah. and visit to occupational therapies. There's mm. another another option for it. Or maybe, should I say, uh, a good option uh, to have 
you know, because uh, hypotherapy is quite expensive here in Malaysia. Not, not everybody are uh, able to or uh, uh, can uh, can provide that kind of therapy for their children, right? So we uh, maybe other alternative or maybe other therapies like um, uh, under the health sciences uh, should be uh, focused on also. Okay. <laughs> I think Miss Dia want to add something, isn't it? No, I think it's very well covered. I think that's all the therapies, and I think even um, animals. You know, there they are have they do have like cat playgrounds. There's a cat playground I came across over here that's open to autistic children. In Malaysia, there's a cat yeah. playground because um, you know autistic children they they do like the support of animals. At least it's subjective. Yet again, not all of them would be open to it, but it is open for them to go and try and and see their reactions and their um you know, approach with the animal, because at times it does help. That's it. All right, thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, questions from myself. <laughs> okay, what, uh, I'm always curious, what can youth do to make sure autism can make friends with other? Any panels can answer my question? <laughs> How we want to make sure uh, autism can make friend, friends with others? You need to facilitate it. As I mentioned yeah. earlier, um, okay. they have a core difficulties in uh, social interaction, in social communication. So maybe you can try to um, kind of uh, facilitate uh, the, the, the relationship. You know, um, don't just wait for the person to initiate or for the person to start first. Youth, you as a youth, you know, can also try to initiate the relationship, initiate the conversation and try to, uh, what we say, try to uh, tune down your, your expectation, you know. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes we, we expect too much. Oh, uh, when, I, when I talk to him, he's supposed to, um, you know, communicate with, with me, uh, eagerly wants to talk to me, you know? try to tune down a little bit of our expectation, maybe that can help <laughs> okay okay thank you uh, for answering my question and next uh we have question from hazreen uh from uh he wants to ask about how about we commonly see autistic people have the ability to speak foreign language rather than their actual native language any panels want to answer this Maybe I can help. Uh, okay. I can. Um, I just maybe in terms of sharing experience, sharing. So, okay. um, uh, in my practice, yes. Uh, most of the time, or, or uh, sometimes, I met with uh parents who say that oh my my child can understand English much better than Malay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then I, I never uh taught them how to to talk English, how to speak in English. But it seems like the child can pick up those words, can pick up those uh, language language much better than Malay. And and yeah. to say why, if you ask me why, it's quite difficult for me to understand also. So maybe <laughs> I cannot answer that specific question of why they can pick up uh, other languages uh, better than their own uh, mother tongue. No, I, mm. I, I cannot help you with that, but how to answer, but maybe uh, we, we need to read more. <laughs> or more research uh, need yeah. to be done to, in order to understand that. Maybe uh, their environment uh, being normalized with uh, the other language uh, other, other from their mother tongue or maybe other causes. So we need to study further and more research. You know, cartoon in television, a lot yeah. of cartoon in television is in English. Yeah. Not a Malay cartoon, you know. So yeah. these kids uh, from from small, they keep listening to all these uh, 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 language cartoon, also talking English, you know. So, yeah. but I cannot say for for sure. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. We need to more research and more study and more read about this. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lata. And also, uh, we have question: uh, What are the common impression towards autism? And why are some people afraid of and not willing to make friends with autistic people? Okay, so um, if I were to 
you know, tell a story. When I was yeah. nine, um, I had a family friend who had an autistic child and he was a big guy. He was already <laughs> older than me. He was like about 17 years old. And oh. I tried to make friends with him. Of course, I was nine. I didn't know much about autism at that time. Yeah. So I, I tried to make friends with him. I played with him and whatnot. And he responded well. Okay, he responded well. He, he looked at me and he laughed sometimes. But at one point, I think he stared at me. He stared at me a long time. And then he, <laughs> he grabbed me and he, he hugged me so hard. And I cried. Okay, because I didn't understand. Lah. So um, yeah. I cried so badly because it hurt. It hurt me at that time because I was a young child and I didn't understand him. And at that point, I sobbed because I was like, oh, why did he hug me so hard? What not? But then, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why the public looks so, um, what was the question again? We were, we're, we're, judgment, we're judgmental to something that we're not, we don't understand. Yeah. That's yeah, true. right? So we, like, we don't understand their situation or their mm. um, personality and whatnot. So we tend to judge them. So basically, when we have the knowledge, we have the understanding, we would try to empathize, right? Yeah. And we would react accordingly. Yeah. Mm. What was the second question again? I'm sorry. Uh, common impression and also why some people are afraid of them and not yeah. willing to be friends. Yeah, I, I think, think that's answered the question. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, we have another question from the same person also, which is Vinusha. She asked uh, asking about what are some common things that people say to autistic individuals during normal everyday conversations that should be avoided or things that they might find offensive? Any panels can answer this question? Think you just need to treat them as equals it's very yeah. important that we treat them as equal it's very important that we um you know yes they aren't um completely normal like us or they might have certain differences in their behavior or in their characteristics but um i think you asked what are some common things that people say to autistic individuals that should be avoided yeah just talk to them like a normal individual you know, talk to them like a normal individual, provide them that respect. And if you just don't make them feel like an outcast, uh, I think that would be a great way to start. That's what I have to say. All right. Thank you, Miss Dia, for your uh, uh, awesome uh, opinion. Uh, okay. I, I would like to say something here uh, from us. Uh, he said that I heard the best way to understand autistic individual is really by asking autistic individuals themselves besides doing personal research. Is it true or, or, or is it not? Can any panel uh, answer and explain about this? I mean, um, because like what we said, every single autistic individuals are different by their yeah. own personalities and traits. So having one person to tell you how can we um, control or handle every single autistic people is, you know, unfair. I'm not, I'm not saying it's unfair, but it's not clean, it's not whole, it's not fully accurate, right? Yes, so I think true. in a way, of course, personal research is very important. So, but I think it's more accurate if you do personal research with one autistic person, you would um, basically learn more about that one person instead of autistic people as a whole but i guess it, on the surface you can basically to understand autistic people you can ask another autistic um, individual to actually learn a lot about those individuals basically on the surface basically all right uh okay thank you uh now we have one more question uh from kadrina hi i once become an assistant teacher at a kindergarten before and as a new teacher, I realized that one of the kids have autism since I have read a lot about what is autism at that age. To be honest, it is quite hard for me to persuade the parents that their child has autism. I would like to ask the panel, what will you do if you were in my situation to tell the parents that there is something wrong with their child? Any the panels can give the solution or opinion about this? 
maybe I can share my experience also on that. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, because um, sometimes it's quite um, difficult yeah. to, for us, you know, to tell uh, the parents that, oh, look, your, your child uh, seems uh, different, you know. So I think maybe uh, she, she got some diagnosis or got some condition that need your attention. You know, sometimes it's very difficult and very um, challenging to tell parents, especially if they don't really um, can uh, accept, they're really able to accept, uh, accept uh, the, the fact that yeah. uh, uh, their children may need some help. You know, mm. so um, uh, and sometimes, but because for me, I'm working in a hospital before previously. So usually when parents come to us um, in a later stage, uh, and when the child already already entering school at the later stage. So usually when, when I ask, okay, what makes you bring the child to the hospital, bring it uh, to meet the doctors? You know? And then, and then uh, the parent will say, oh, because the teachers asked me to. Okay, yeah. the teacher said um, there is uh, the, the teachers uh, detect something is uh, special about the kids, you know. So yeah. and then the, uh, the teacher asked uh, asked me to bring the kids to the doctors to meet the doctors, and then and okay. then so that's usually what happened, you know. For those who want to accept it, for those uh, for, for parents who want to or say, oh okay. yes, maybe I, I really need to bring uh, my kids uh, to to see the doctor and uh, you know uh, to have a, a, a further assessment on what's going what's going on, you know. Uh, but uh, for those who who don't really able to accept it uh, to accept the fact, maybe they don't even turn up in the hospital. So I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened to them. You know, they, they just sometimes uh, they just change school. They just mm. change school, you know. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe other school will accept uh, the kids. Maybe uh, other teachers can accept the kids, you know. As that's the the difficult part of it. So, so the, the kids won't have uh, won't have like what we call early intervention. Won't have early treatment for the condition. So that will make it harder later on for us to, to you know to. Uh, because when we start the intervention later uh, or late at the age, it's, it's difficult, it's more difficult for us to overcome the challenges. So, but really, 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 but uh, usually uh, maybe if the parents already have, uh, I mean the kid has another sibling, or maybe the first one is a typically developmental case. The second one is typically developmental case. Then the third one, then maybe the parent will really uh, can differentiate between his yeah. first child, second child, and then the third child is there something wrong with the third child. Maybe they can uh, really uh, react uh, uh, faster. Then mm -hmm. those parents who have children with uh, who have child with autism, and it is the first kid. You know, it's hard for them to, to differentiate uh, what are the typical development of children compared to what are my kids now uh, having, you know? So sometimes it's quite difficult. Sometimes if you need another person to help with telling the mothers, oh, look, uh, maybe uh, uh, sending the kids to hospital may help. Just to, to, to kind of like um, uh, further assessment or to have like... Uh, Another opinion of the kid's uh, condition, no, but okay. tell it in a nicer way, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it depends on the, their acceptance, really. Yeah, <laughs> I think for me also, uh, we can discuss with the teachers and also the parents, uh, properly and nicely, so that they can understand. Uh, and the acceptance, uh, basically, uh. Lambat laun uh, or people say lambat laun will uh, slowly get uh, and understand their child problems. Yeah, because and the important thing is for us to to give uh, to start the intervention earlier. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Yeah. That's true. Intervention is important. All right. Uh, now we seem to have uh, to near the end, and I would like to ask uh, any panel want to add something message to the community or to the autistic children or autistic person. One last word from all panels. Maybe one from me. 
Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so I'm talking Perfect. about, I've been talking about the awareness, you know, awareness yeah. for, for all of you, youth here, to have awareness about autism, right? It's good to have it, to understand their challenges, to understand the difficulties that they are facing in everyday life. So, um, maybe uh, in the first uh, step of uh, having that awareness, I would like to um, urge all of you here, no offense, but please do not label them. You know, do mm. not call them autistic individual. Do not call them autism people. Do not call them uh, autistic children. No, you are labeling an, in, in another human being as something else. You know, so how should we call them? Oh, children with autism. Person mm. with autism. Individual with autism. It's the condition that they're having, not them as a, the problem. It's the condition that they, they are having. Do you understand me? Can you understand me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so really because I keep, keep saying the word uh, in the, in, uh, autistic individuals, uh, autism person, autism children, autistic children here in this, uh, in this forum and also in this uh, the chat box. Yeah. You know, please use a, a proper label for it. <laughs> you know, children with autism, individual with autism, or children with ASD. You know, they are a person, a human being, just the same like us with yeah. this condition. That's all. Not they yeah. are themselves. It's the autistic individual. No. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay so, thank you. so I train ourselves to use that uh, word from now on. Uh, that's as the first step. In, in order to accept them in our life, in our community. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Last word from Miss Siti Umayawada and Miss Dia. Uh, okay. So um, I guess for okay. us as, I think we're, off the, we're on the same ages, basically. Um, yeah. For the youth, basically, find, uh, in general, find your passion and advocate for something right. So in this case, this initiative itself is all about you um, advocating for autism or people with autism. Sorry, Dr. Masni. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. So this initiative itself is amazing. And I think for everyone else in this forum, not just about autism, if you have any passion for anything else, find that passion and actually do something with that passion. Okay, advocate and make the world a better place with your passion. Okay, you know, just start by doing small initiatives and inshallah, it will become something big. You have to start somewhere and it doesn't yeah. matter if it's small or if it's big. If it's big, then okay, lah, alhamdulillah. Kan? But yeah. you have to start somewhere. And I myself, I'm a volunteer under Soroptimus International, which we empower for women and child rights. So... What I do, uh, we train students from um, primary schools. And, you know, even though those are small initiatives and we're not really sure if those children actually take our message home and actually apply that knowledge, but at least we start somewhere and we're hoping for the best, right? So that's yeah. it from me. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Ms. Dia, any last word from you? I think I would just like to highlight the importance of education. It's very important okay. that we keep learning, we keep reading, we keep trying to understand. And more than that as well, whatever we are learning, I think as Huda mentioned, put it into action somewhere that we are passionate about. So do something about it then, if you can, as compared to just um, learning and having the knowledge about it, do apply it. That's about it. All right, that's all, thank you. Uh, our panelists to, for today forum. And as a conclusion, such educational campaigns should target the general public and focus on means to help enhance the quality of life of children with autism and their families. A more informed community will definitely be more tolerant to these unfortunate children. The public awareness of ASD needs improvement. Areas for targeted education were identified to help improve the quality of life of children with autism and their families. Now, before we end, let's hear some messages from the children with autism to the whole world. Help me manage my autistic spectrum disorder. First, 
overload. Recognize when I'm overloaded. I may cover my ears, paint the floor, become restless, and try to move away from you. Try using a calm voice and reinsurance to help me calm down. I may like music or space and time to be on my own. Second, interest me. Understand that I may find it very difficult to learn about things I am not interested in. Please try and find something I am interested in as a possible way into any topic. Third, think before you speak. I may take all that you say literally, so please think about the words and phrases that you, you use and check out my perception of what is being asked. And for communication, I may only be able to look or listen, but not to do both together. If I'm not looking at you, it does not mean I'm not listening. Check by asking me. And lastly, change. Give me time to acclimatize to change. I am not very good at sudden changes. It can make me very anxious. And it makes a huge difference for me to know that there is an adult at my school and community who knows all about my conditions and who I can talk to if I'm worried or unwell. Thanks again to our support panel for this amazing forum and also the audiences that actively participate in this informative forum. Now I will pass back to MC for the next agenda. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, audiences. Bye. Good night. All right. All right. Thank you, Muhammad Afiq bin Zaidun as the moderator for our forum tonight and also all the panels for your willingness to share opinions and information today. To be honest, this is the long, is it, this is the most long Q&A sessions that I haven't attend for the rest of my life. I, I can see some of the feedback at the chat box, like people keep saying, uh, this is interesting. Thank you for sharing. Like, uh, thank you for giving some knowledge and they learned something today. I feel glad that everyone here learned something today. Like, uh, as for me, I learned a lot. I learned that uh, I learned I can get a lot of tips and also some some tips from the panel that I can be to my family members. I also have some family members with autism. I also, as I said, I also experienced working as a teacher as a, at a kindergarten, handling a students with uh, autism. So I can see that there's a lot, actually a lot of things that we can get tonight. So before we moving on, there's a special slot that I would like to continue, which is I would like to announce a promotion regarding to a competition called Pertandingan Photography Hari Autism Sedunia. So I would like to invite all of you to let's watch a video first before I promote the competitions. So XCOM Multimedia, you can show the video first. Hai semua, kami dari Persatuan Mahasiswa Fakulti Sains Kesihatan akan mengadakan pertandingan sepena hari autism sedunia. Terdapat dua kategori pertandingan yang dipertandingkan iaitu OOTD dan videografi. Pemenang berpeluang untuk menangi wang tunai sebanyak RM300. Anda hanya perlu follow PMFSKUKMKL di Instagram, mengisi Google Form dan post gambar anda bersama caption yang kreatif di laman sosial Instagram anda. Jangan lupa untuk meletakkan mode public account anda. Jangan lepaskan peluang ini. Mari sama-sama kita tunjukkan sokongan terhadap penghidap autism. Alright. Alright, this competition is organized by the MP Entrepreneurships and Innovation Exco or Faculty of Health Science Student Associations. This competition was held as a mechanism to cultivate awareness about autism towards the community in our country and also to raise awareness in community to be more sensitive towards autistic people. Now, I will explain briefly about this competition. This competition has two categories, OOTD and also videography for those who are interested 
please listen carefully. So the first category is OOTD category. Participants are required to upload picture of themselves on their respective Instagram account according to their creativity. You must wearing a blue outfit as it is the main requirement. And also, participant must come up with a creative caption with a hashtag. So for those who are interested, you may just take a picture, a selfie of yourself wearing a blue scarf or a blue shirt as long as it's a blue uh it's a blue outfit and it's not just a simple competition you can get a prize cash as a reward which is if you won the first place you can get a cash prize worth 100 ringgit malaysian and second place 80 ringgit malaysia and also the third place is 50 ringgit malaysia all right, we're moving on to the second category. Just now, if you're interested in selfie, you can just take a selfie and upload it on Instagram. But if you're interested to talk like me, talk in front of the camera, you can join the videography categories, which is participants are required to upload a video on their respective Instagram account with title, Autism Awareness, What is Our Role with Durations of Two Minutes. Winner will get a cash prize, which is for the first place, you will get 300 ringgit. Second place, you get 200 ringgit. And the third place, you get 100 ringgit. So for the participations, participants are required to turn on their Instagram account to public mode throughout the day of the competitions. Hereby, I would like to invite all students to participate in these competitions to show our role as a caring community to autistic people and raise awareness about autism towards community. As what you guys learned today, we got a lot of input today. I hope that you guys can join this competition since it's, it is one way to show our 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 care for the autistic people, to show that we care for them. All right, so not to forget, this competition is open to all students throughout the Malaysia. For those who are interested, you may scan the QR code that is currently being displayed on your screen. The form include the form is include more detail with the term, the term and conditions and requirement for you to fill up in order to participate in this competition. Ladies and gentlemen, sadly enough, we have now come to an end of our forum today. I know that every all every one of you is excited throughout the throughout tonight that we get from at 30 p.m. until 10 p.m. We got a lot of input today, but we have now come to an end. We appreciate the cooperation from the audience for participating in today's forum session. Before we end this session, let's have a photography session. I would like to invite Exco Multimedia for this session. Okay, I'd like the participants to get ready for the photography session by turning on your cameras. Okay, everybody ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. One more. One, two, three. Okay, um, last one, freestyle. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, everyone. And also, thank you, Afika. So before we... Uh, so I would like to remind all of you, don't forget to join our next forum session, which will be held on next Friday on 9 April at 8 p.m. We will gonna, going to have a, a special guest as well as today. We will have a lot of input on the next Friday. So I hope that everyone can join us at 9 April, which is on next Friday. So the link of the Zoom platform will be updated later. So as a reminder to all audience, don't forget to check out before leaving the Zoom platform. You may scan the QR code provided on the screen or you can just click the link provided in the chat box. That's all from us. Thank you. Good night. And you may leave the meeting. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Bye everybody. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.